All right, guys, so today here we are at New Era Brewing. We're going to get inside, chat to Gary, chat about all things home brewing right up to the professional scale. Everything is going to be great. Gary, mate. Thanks for having us in here and checking out some of this cool gear. No worries. Um, let's start. So where are we going to start with? We're going to start with this SS Brewtech thing. Mate, um, th this is the mighty Unitank 2.0. Yep. And it's really the pinnacle of, of homebrew fermentation. Yep. And I say that because, you know, SS have been in the game for a long time now. And um, this is the second revision of a very popular line of Unitanks. Yep. And it's for homebrewers out there that not only want to produce top quality beer, but they also want to look like they can produce top quality beer. Yep. It's basically a cut down version or a smaller version of a professional series tank. And you've been around, I think you've been around breweries a I've, few times. I've been in a couple. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. yeah. allegedly. <laughs> the big thing about, about tanks and about fermentation is temperature control, yep. as you know. And these tanks basically take that to the next level so for some years now we've been using a coil system which drops down from the lid and basically we run a cold liquid usually glycol through it yep. um, now we've actually gone to a jacketed system yeah right it's very similar obviously to a pro series tank yep yeah cool and um, not only is it the glycol jacketed system on it like you've got your sample ports you've got your racking arm uh, it's all it's all there yeah mate yeah, yeah. so Anything that you can do on a Pro Series tank, generally you can do on these, these series at home. So as you pointed out, it's got a lot of, uh, as you call it, appendages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stainless steel bling. So we've got a couple of big uh, butterfly valves down here. We've got the 1.5 inch uh, dump valve. So dumping all that sort of hop residue and yep. yeast and everything else out of that. Plus we've got a 1.5 inch racking arm down here, or racking um, butterfly valve, which you can attach all sorts of different things off there. We've got a sample port here so you can sample your beer and we can even attach a, uh, a sample coil to that so this tank's capable of pressurizing up to about 15 psi yeah okay so we can effectively sample under pressure take a little cheeky little yep. taster as we go along nice um big blow off but um off the side here on the uh on this side here we've got an inline carbonation or inline oxygenation whichever you'd like yep. to do but mostly carbonation so you can carb that beer in the tank you can chill it down to serving temperature. And yep. Technically, if you've got a, a willing partner, you could have that in your lounge room, right? Yeah, yeah. Just Perfect little uni tank ready to go. Pulling beer off the, off the tank. <laughs> and the um, pressure gauge. Yep, Pro Series pressure gauge just there. Um, obviously, um, as I said, these guys are rated up to about 15 psi, which covers most, most bases at the home brew level. Yeah. What do you look for a home brewer? What are you looking at? Yeah, look, it comes in different sizes. So this is what's called a half barrel or about a 64 litre version, yep. which is probably our most popular. Yep. We sell these to both home brewers and sort of some pro brewers for yeah. um, recipe development, that sort Pilot of thing. Pilot kits and whatnot. Yeah, comes in a comes in a uh, 26 litre version as well, which is obviously quite popular as well because it's that fits that home brew corny keg market. Yep. Um, a 52 litre, which is uh, which is about double batch type yep. territory. And we also have a one BBL, which is twice this size, so about yeah, 120 great. litres. Again, very more popular with small breweries. Yeah, yep. Now, you can CIP this, same as a yeah, professional one? Yeah, absolutely, man. We can just drop a CIP ball straight down off the, through this three inch TC here, this comes off. Yep. And um, with a aid of a pump, we can push cleaning fluid through it and sanitization no problems at all. Yep. You can just sort of sit back there and have a bit. Let it go. Have a bit. <laughs> um, so one of our uh, sponsors, Brad from Rallings, um, he hit me up and said, oh, CIP, what does CIP mean? I know what it means, yep. um, but he promised me I need to ask, so. Well, it, it basically means that, you know, easy cleaning. So clean in place yep. uh, was, the, was the original designation as far as I know, unless yeah. Brad's no, no, it's because you can't move the tanks, right? So yeah, they've yeah. got to be cleaned Correct. in place. Correct, cleaned so, in place. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And look, at a homebrew level, you can, you can put casters on these things yeah, and yeah. wheel them around, right? But, um, you know, again, for those guys that have got, or girls that have got three, four, five, six tanks in their homebrew brewery, yep. you know, sometimes wheeling them around is a bit harder. So cleaning a place sort of makes a bit of sense. 
but yeah, no, look, they've been a really, they're, they're a really popular series. They've, this is, as I said, the second revision done quite a bit to sort of change it around. The stainless steel on this one's a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit heavier. Yep. The neoprene jacket, which is a condensation style jacket. Yep. Um, a little bit thicker. So just sort of to, to, whip, to mop up that uh, condensation, which is fairly important in, mm. in a place like Queensland because, you know, cold tank, warm air. Exactly. Creates yep. water, goes yeah. everywhere. Um, but the main, the main selling point of these is now this new, this new glycol jacket, jacket, which makes cleaning really easy. Um, it, it's, you know, you don't have a coil you need to pull out and sort of clean individually. Mm. So that CIP, that clean in place type stuff, yep. comes into its own. Um, now we've talked about glycol. Yep. Um, so glycol is like a, it's a liquid that can be boiled um, and be chilled. Um, yep. It holds its temp quite a lot of range. Correct. Um, how do they attach this? Like where's, what's a glycol system look like? What yeah, so if we have a look at the back of the tank there, we've got two ports. So one up here and one down there. And generally speaking, um, the glycol sort of goes in from the bottom and then comes out from the top. And yep. It runs around the jacket. So in this tank, there's, a, there's an extra two layers basically in this belly side. And um, it will then have, form a sort of a cold jacket which will then allow the tank to cool itself when mm. necessary. We don't use that for heating. Yep. Um, what we've got is we've got a customized heat pad which sits underneath the neoprene jacket on the cone. Oh, yeah. And as you know, hot <laughs> air liquid rises. Yep. So it just gen gently sort of heats the tank and then keeps it at a certain temperature. What we're, we're sort of aiming for is not to let it get too too far off where we want to be. So if we're doing ales, it's usually around 18 degrees. Yep. If we're doing lagers, it's about 12. And we use a system called an FTSS, which is a ferment temperature stabilization system. Yep. Which is basically a little controller. We've got a little digital controller. And you set the temperature, preset temperature, and then the glycol or the heat pad will just turn on and off. As turn well. on and off, yeah, yep. within about one to two degrees, right? Yeah. What we don't want is obviously we, when we're fermenting, even at you know pro level, you don't want a sort of a wide temperature range. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean that's when you get some, you get some really big phenols and yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Funny unless unless you're trying to get that, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh unless yeah. There's, there's those beer styles as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this works in conjunction with a with a glycol chiller. Um, which we've got a couple of different models of those, yep. depending on what you want to do. And we can get the beer somewhere down to zero if we want to crash chill it or yep. we want to sort of serve on it. Um, but most of the time when we're fermenting, it's, it's sort of around that, say, 10 to 20 degree mark. Yeah. Uh, All right. What else have we got? Look like Mate, we've got some fun let's stuff. Let's have a quick little look at a, at a lower cost one. So, Needless to say, uni tanks from about eighteen hundred dollars to about three thousand dollars. That's the range of uni tank. Yep. This is a conical fermenter, so it's actually a similar design, but it's a little bit less featured. Um, the main difference between a conical fermenter and a uni tank is it doesn't hold any pressure. Yep. Right. So it's not designed for pressurized fermentation, not designed for in-tank carbonation, um, and for those home brewers that are really brewing in kegs or bottle fermenting yep you know they don't really need in tank carbonation they don't yeah. really need you know pressurized fermentation yep so don't hold any pressure what they what they can do is you can still do um, pressurized transfer yep so to a bottle or a can or well, not to a can but to a bottle or a keg um, for for temperature control we go back to our tried and true um, type system so basically it uses a that yep. uses a coil and the cold liquid, whether it be glycol or water, runs down that coil and back up and, and out. And basically we use a thermo well, which is just down there. Yep. And a temperature controller similar to an FTSS um, to keep that temp where it needs to yep. be. Um, still has things like the large butterfly valves. These guys have a slightly different, smaller version. Um, which is customizable, has a, has a silicon based racking um, inside the actual tank. So yep. you can actually turn the, turn the racking port around and then that racking arm will then pick up, you know, various beer that you want to shunt out. Yeah. Um, 
these guys come in three different sizes, so 26 litres up to 64 litres. Yeah, okay. And they're, they're about 40%, 30%, 40% cheaper than what a, uh, what a uni tank yeah. would be. So yeah. if you're in the market for something that and you don't need, don't need in-tank carbonation, you don't need pressurisation, yep. and you want to keep it a bit simpler, yeah, yeah. you know, because you don't have that sort of pressure gauges and things hanging off it. Yeah, this that, is the baby. That's where you go. Yeah, yeah nice. So we're just going to quickly duck in. We've got our crafted glasses here. Our Matic beer we grabbed from the last time we were down there. So let's crack on. Nice. <laughs> I think a lot of people, especially me, yep. probably you, Adzi, you want a bit of a simpler way of doing things. Brew bucket. Brew bucket, mate. We've actually sold so many brew buckets, they could probably uh, go around Australia. Yeah, right. Maybe not. But <laughs> yeah. This is the second iteration of the brew bucket, so this is the brew bucket 2.0. Yep. So we sort, of, uh, we sort of thought about a few things on our previous range. Um, so we've redesigned the tap here. It's got what we call a pure flow tap, which means you can you can adjust it from zero to 100% and anywhere in between rather than just on off. Yep. Um, we've mounted our, uh, our little temperature gauge on top here so that you can, and it's got a long thermo well that drops down into the bucket. Yep. But the great, the great thing about brew buckets and things is, is just how simple and easy and, you know, you can sort of just, just throw them around. Yep. You can, you know, they've got very, very simple Nothing stuff in to there. Them. Yep. Yeah. Um, but unlike, say, glass carboys, which, you know, you can drop full of beer, yep. smash everywhere. Or Get slippery when you're cleaning them. Yeah, yep. exactly. Or, say, the, the original plastic type fermenters, which get scratched yep. and, and need to be replaced. Yeah, because that inhibits growth of bacteria. Correct, yep. correct. And also taste, you know, yep. eventually comes off. These, these never ne really need to be replaced again. You just replace the lid gasket and away you go. Yeah. Um, you know, impervious to light, impervious to air. This is the 26 litre version, most popular version. This little guy here is for the, uh, for the real experimental dudes, yep. right? You want to take a batch and then split it in half. So he's about 13 litres. Yeah, right. Um, it's called the mini brew bucket. And we've actually got temperature kits for both of those as yeah, well, cool. so we can control my glycol. Does he have a tap on him? He does, yeah, but he's, he's missing his tap. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't say anything to him because he'll, yeah, yeah, he'll, get, he'll get jealous. He understands. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's the next step? Mate, next... Do we, do we go up crazy, do we...? Well, we could go up crazy, yeah, but I think we should switch across to some other parts of yeah, brewery because yeah. otherwise Let's we go. talk about fermentation all day. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get back to the, back to the uh, I guess, the ingredient preparation. Yep. This is the SS Brewtech grain mill. The mill. The mill, mate, yeah. And look, it's in all, it's all black colour. It's, yeah. It looks mean, looks like a, a real mill. That's right. right. <laughs> Basically, it's got this fairly large hopper for a home brew. It's about 10 kilos of grain at a time. Yep. Um, and uh, it's got a stepless type um, system where we can just adjust it to whatever grain sort of size crush you want. Yeah, great. Really sturdy, you know, big 24 volt motor at the back there, pushing it along. Yep. Um, it'll go all day. I've got, I've got some, uh, some of these at homebrew shops and they basically just never stop. They just, yeah. just keep on going. Yep. Let's have a look at the actual beer making. And we sort of switch manufacturers here. So this is a Brutals B80 and it's an 80 liter all in one type system. Yep. Um, comes out of Norway, this product, uh, and um, they spent a lot of time uh, sort of developing what they thought was the, the best brewing system yep. they could brew. So it's unashamedly at the top of the tree. So, yep. you know, there's a lot of cheaper alternatives out there. Yep. But still for homebrew kits? Like it's yeah, the, yeah, they, generally. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes in a 40 litre, an 80 litre, and a 150 litre. Hmm. Okay, so we do have breweries out there in, um, in Australia that use the B150 yep. as their primary brewery. Yep. So obviously very small. Yeah. But most of the time for brewery use, it's probably again a pilot system. Yeah. And for home brew, it's, it's just a great system to use. Yeah. It runs all on a series of four way and three way valves. So it uses okay, yep. these, you know, three way valve type systems to control where the work goes. Yep. It's an all-in-one system, so basically you're doing your mashing and boiling all in one vessel. Yep. Um, very powerful, so the B80 has 6,000 watts of power, um, all driven by this nice little touchscreen here. Yeah, cool. So as you can see, we can, we've mounted this on a little stand and we can move it around and we can just 
have infinite control over what we're doing, what the pump's doing, yep. what the heating's doing, and then via these three-way valves, we can just adjust as we go. Send what you need to, yeah, to wear. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly. Um, we've got ours mounted on this little crane because... Yeah, so do you recommend <laughs> particular cranes and support? Well, we just, we, just bought, we just bought this from Bunnings. So yep. it's a yeah, no, cool. $99 crane on a $109 arm oh, wow. mounted to the wall. Yeah. So, you know, grain gets pretty heavy. This has got a, about a 24 kilo max capacity yep. grain, roughly. Um, so when you've got 20-ish to 24-ish uh, kilos of grain wet, yep. you know, that's a big, yeah, yeah. big weight. So it just allows us to... Even pulling 10 kilos out of your grandfather. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. Is, is an effort. That's right. So it just allows us to uh, effectively control that. Yep. And, uh, and move it where we want to have move it. Yeah. And, uh, and then go from there. That's great. Yeah. So once it's actually brewed here, um, we've got a number of options here. We've got an external HLT and... We've got a uh, sort of a few other bibs and bobs attached to it. Hot liquor tank. Yeah, for those don't yeah, know the just HLT. for sparging and things. Just Brad, watch him. <laughs> Acronym City. That's, yeah. Acronym City. <laughs> He'll call me again, and I'll be like, ah. <laughs> Hot liquor tank. Yep. Um, and then we'll just push it to the fermenter via the pump. Yep. Um, and then that's where that fermentation process goes, and that brings us to our next our next product. Excellent. All right, so this is a this is a Contour Mini Chili. Yeah, cool. So what the Mini Chili is, it's it's basically enables us to chill a volume of liquid. So it has a tank in there, about a thirty liter tank. Yep. And we can chill that liquid down to negative six. Yep. Basically via glycol, as we do. Hundred percent glycol you use? No, we use about thirty percent. Yep. So if you used hundred percent, you could probably go lower again. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. But it would obviously be fairly expensive. Yeah. Efficiency-wise, it's not needed. It's... No, definitely not. So generally speaking, in the homebrew side of things, we set our glycol chillers down about negative three. Yep. That's probably as low as we need to go. Yeah. I've had a few instances where people have tried to push it and then doing low alcohol beers. Oh, frozen actually, their beers. Frozen yeah, their yeah. beers, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, they've been wondering why that's sort of, you know, coming out quite icy. Yeah, and also high ABV. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so this allows us to, to effectively do up to, well this one will do up to um, eight fermenters yep. of this particular model um, of that sort of 64 litre size. And then we can, we, can then, um, we can then individually control that temperature on each fermenter. Yeah, great, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, it's, a, it's an expensive part of the homebrew type setup. So something like this, this is a Mini Chili 05, um, middle of the range type product. Yep. It's about $2,000. There are obviously cheaper uh, options on the market. These ones come from Germany. Yep. So all stainless steel parts inside, including tanks and coils. Yeah, great. I've seen a few on the market that are not that way built and you know, they don't last as long. Yep. And they're pretty simple units, hey? Um, like there's not a lot to them. Um, it's just essentially to chill that liquid. Correct. Um, so that you can pump it around um, through your jackets. Yeah, I mean, if we have a look inside, you know, it's basically made up of a stainless steel tank and coil, and the uh, refrigerant runs around the coil and then chills that, that tank full of liquid. Yep. And we can run just straight out water if we want to, but yep. obviously we need to just make sure it's above zero. Yeah. Compressor on this side, which is a bit like a, uh, an air conditioner compressor. Yep. And then that basically then runs the refrigerant around, cools the tank, and then we use these, these uh, pickups here to effectively pull the liquid through. And what we use is we use a small submersible pump yeah, cool. attached to it. And it's, that pump's then attached to the controller. The controller then reads the temperature from the thermo well, says, hey, I need cooling. Yep. Turns the pump on, pulls it through. Off you go. Drops it back and the cycle continues yeah do you find that it's like a, a lot of your equipment here is um that step up from that first home brew well not even the first home brew um from when you initially start your first grain brewing yeah um because when you first home brew you probably bought a cooper's bucket or something and got some extract and yep got the bug yeah. um and then depending on how bad you go it's it's a money pit everyone thinks well, oh yeah i'm gonna save money and 
and it's not, right? I, you... I always say stainless steel <laughs> is a slippery slope, right? Yeah. So you start off with a brew bucket and before you know it, you've got, you know, three brew buckets or a yeah. conical and three unis. And, you know, as you said, it's a bug. Yep. Um, especially if you get a bit of success, like home brewing is like any hobby. Yep. You know, the more successful you are at producing good quality beer, the more you want to produce. Yep. Um, and it also helps to have a few mates. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, you know, yeah. Home brewing, yeah. I think, is a real, is a, it's, it can be a real social type event. Yeah. Um, I get involved in quite a lot of the clubs in, around Brisbane and yep. whatnot. And, because uh, Babs come here quite frequently, don't they? Yeah, Babs, yep. Babs come here and brew, um, and among others. And, um, you know, the camaraderie and, and, you know, that amongst those groups is really good. Yeah. Speaking of home brew, yep. um, ANHC coming up in November. Yeah, really exciting. Um, Australian National Home Brewing Com is it Conference, Conference? That's, yeah. that's the C. Yeah. Um, you're but looking forward to that? Very much so. So we've been a supporter of ANHC for the last three, four conferences. Yep. Um, and they're a great event. Um, I think that anyone at any level of home brew can get something out of ANHC. Yeah. Um, it really, really gives you exposure to a whole heap of stuff that you've never thought of before. Yep. Um, just and just hanging out with a whole group of like-minded individuals yep. is awesome. And, and just finding out some tips and tricks and oh. because some people out there in home brew land have some amazing bit of kit that they've done themselves. Yeah. Sometimes it's a cleaning thing. And you're yep. like, oh, <laughs> that'll save me so much time though. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like so, a corny keg cleaner. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those sort of little bits and pieces make it all worthwhile. 100%. Yeah. But also the social events. So they've got the pairing dinner. They've got, you know, usually a bit of a brewery tour. Um, you've got to be a bit prepared to uh, have a bit of a long session yep. because, you know, it's, it's, you're going from about nine o'clock in the morning onwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those guys know how to drink, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My kind of event. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah first time in Brisbane. Yep. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, I think we're going to have it at the uh, South Bank TAFE and a few other locations. Yeah, great. I think it's going to be a great event. What's your favourite bit of kit to work on? Because like, you've got a, you've got so much. Oh mate, we stuff. don't play favourites here. We don't. Play yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I mean, you've always got some favourites. You know, like I, I, I really like uni tanks. Yep. Um, and and you know that that sort of, it just makes me feel like I'm a real brewer. Yep. When I'm pushing liquid in and out of a uni tank, um, I really like the the brew tool stuff um, because again, it's got a great combination of digital with that touch display yep. plus also the the traditional mechanical type you know yeah you move time, time to move the beer that's yeah. right <laughs> yeah. um although you know I've, I've had my share of switching the wrong port and you know finding <laughs> why is that beer going <laughs> yeah. on the floor you know, i mean i think every brewer's done that everyone's done that yep yeah. yeah almost sort of missed my home brew roots um i worked in a home brew shop for almost three years and that's where I worked there because it paid for my brewing. Yep. Uh, got my grain and then I'd go home and brew the next day. And yeah, you, when you brew every week for three or four years, um, and then now I work in breweries and I'm not on the brew deck anymore because I don't like cleaning. Because if you're on the brew deck, you've got to clean as well. And I, cleaning's I think, like 90% of it. I, I was going to say, I think that, <laughs> you know, we, when you're in the industry for a while, you soon realise that brewing isn't quite as glamorous as what a lot of people I think I've found it is. my niche and I like my niche, but yeah, the... I love the brewing side, I love recipe development, and I love the beer side. But man, CIP and cleaning, and it, and it has to be done. Because yeah. you know when you're a home brewer, yeah. if you want good home brew, you've got to clean, and you've got to clean everything, and that's fine. But yeah, when you've got, you know, thousand, thousands and thousands of litre tanks, that yeah. it's just an ongoing... Look, it's, it's, um, it's, home brewing is just like a smaller system, right? Yeah. It's still, you still got to maintain that. Still got to clean. Thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, <laughs> and I think some of the best home brewers have those systems in place. Yeah. You know, they strip down butterfly valves. They, you know, they inspect every, every gasket yep. to make sure, um, you know, we've had, we've had been very, really fortunate with our gear. We have very little returns on it, um, considering the amount we ship. Yep. Um, but some of the returns that we've got for people that are, not as happy as what they could be are generally from you know you get the gear back and it's 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 not in a great shape yeah. right so they've not looked after it they've not cleaned it properly yeah. and subsequently you know that beer has turned out to be subpar what um, what we need to come up with mate is the ultimate homebrew kit that just 
clean, self cleans itself. Self -clean. Yeah, yeah. Now, maybe if we had a few more of these uh, these beers here, we could, we could come up with something. Let's see what we can do about that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers.